Welcome to the Functional Nurse Podcast. On this episode, we will talk about why nurses might use the term functional nursing rather than functional medicine. So stay tuned. Hello, nurses, and welcome to this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. My name is Bridget Sager. I'm a family nurse practitioner. I am a functional medicine consultant, and I teach functional medicine for nurses through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine. Today is a little bit of a shorter episode. I wanted to talk a little bit about this topic that comes up a lot with my students. When I was building the course, I was using the term functional medicine, of course, right? Writing a course on functional medicine for nurses. And it was kind of like bothering me a little bit because I wasn't writing anything that had to do with medicine or prescriptions or like the the stereotype of what that term means. And it was kind of egging at me, but who am I, right? So I didn't really think too much of it. And then in our very first cohort, in our very first Zoom meeting, I, I had been reading assignments the day before, and one of the students was just really excited and wrote functional nursing. And I was like that she wanted to be a functional nurse. And I was just so taken aback that it had occurred to other people so quickly and that we were on the same track. So when we were in the meeting, it came up again and uh, we all got pretty jazzed about it. Um, But then uh, reason took over for me. And I was thinking about the fact that, you know, functional medicine has been around the term since the, I believe the 1990s uh, was when Dr. Jeffrey Bland met and they, uh, with a a lot of other thought leaders, and they came up with the term functional medicine. In practice, I'm sure there are many providers that were implementing similar concepts long before that. But let's say that functional medicine has been around for 30 years. It's still in its infancy. And even in the time that I've been learning it, it has grown in popularity pretty quickly. I think that it is gaining traction as uh, a, a respected way to heal people rather than just treat their symptoms when they have health concerns. But it also has a ways to go in its reputation, unfortunately, because you'll have a lot of allopathic providers that have heard that functional medicine is all about the expensive tests and supplements. And I know that there are many functional medicine practitioners, people that call themselves functional medicine practitioners, and their focus is on really expensive tests and supplements. So that isn't doing that stereotype any good, that we do have people with that title practicing exactly what that uh, misconception looks like. When you truly practice functional medicine, if you've heard me talk, you know this. The problem with that stereotype is that if you are addressing someone's health concern and ultimately their issue comes from a reaction that they're having to a food they eat frequently or a nutrient deficiency, a stressor in their life or a toxin they're exposed to or they were exposed to in the past and that gets addressed, that food gets removed, that nutrient gets replaced, the stress issue gets resolved the toxin issue gets addressed. Why would you continue to need to take prescription medication long term? And if it really is about an inflammatory food or a nutrient deficiency or any of the other examples, and you do a thorough intake with this person, first of all, I don't think that we need to use really expensive tests all the time. I think that if we do really thorough intakes for people, we get a ton of information from their intake process most of the time what is going on in somebody's health that is causing them to feel poorly is about our modern lifestyle and it is not about their genetics specifically you know our health doesn't happen to us our genes are activated by our lifestyles the reason that we have significantly greater prevalences of most every chronic health condition now compared to 100 years ago is because our lifestyle has changed our food has changed and even our thought processes have changed and all of that is affecting our health the amount of toxins that we're exposed to on a regular basis is affecting our health 
So in truth, I teach my students that what people really need is an informed advocate in healthcare to help them tease through misinformation and uncover their personal root cause. To me, that isn't medicine, that is nursing. So if you are prescribing a medication for that, then, you know, that's not functional medicine, right? Unless, you know, sometimes some providers choose to use prescription antifungals or antibiotics, for example, at times antivirals. But when I was learning functional medicine, I was being taught functional medicine by physicians, chiropractors, biochemists, uh, not very many nurses, nutritionists, which I think that's great. And, you know, like they all have their training and each of us have our training a little bit differently. So when you go and you take a class and it's filled with people with all different kinds of backgrounds, then there is a little bit more of this broad education. So uh, what I found was happening for me was I was sitting in classes and they were teaching fundamental nursing information that I had learned when I got my first degree as a nurse a long time ago. And so I would sit and wait and eventually they would get to the part about how like, okay, I learned this in nursing school. I never realized how important it was. And now here we are. They're going to tell me <laughs> what to do about this to help heal this person. And that's when the light bulb went off for me that functional medicine and nursing, holistic nursing, they are the same. And what we learned in nursing school as nurses is what functional medicine is all about. It's about considering the whole person and then taking that time to find their unique why. So I'm, I'm really still on the fence about the term, right? Because functional medicine is still kind of in its infancy. And I really believe that it is the future of healthcare. It is the way that we undo what is going on in our healthcare system. Uh, I think nurses should be leaders in that and that we are the most numerous and we spend the most time with our patients compared to all other modalities. And so I think that nurses practicing functional medicine is one of the strongest things that we have available to change our healthcare system for the better and address the fact that we do have increasing prevalence of all these chronic health conditions. Functional medicine being the future, I think it's a really important thing for us to all align with and use that term. But I think, you know, we aren't practicing medicine. And sometimes I'll see things like people will write, especially people in other specialties, like a physician or naturopathic doctor, I'll see comments or even nurse practitioners will comment and ask me if um, how a nurse could practice functional medicine because of the term medicine. And I think that's the misnomer is that that term medicine really means anything because we're not practicing medicine when we help people using functional practices. We're addressing their lifestyle, we're addressing their nutrition, we're, we're addressing their exposure to toxins. Those are things that nurses do all the time. And every nurse's scope of practice in I have it's an assignment in the course that I teach to research your scope of practice. Ed, educator and advocate across the board. That is what nurses are all about. That is our scope of practice. And so when we dig deeper into each of those topics, the holistic health topics that we learn in nursing school, we can really use functional medicine to its full potential. So I do feel that the 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 term medicine is the the part that makes people feel like maybe nurses, are you qualified to do this? Like, did you did you get some kind of like uh graduate degree to do this. And I, I don't feel that that's what's needed at all. I feel that nurses need to know the how, right? They already know the why. We connect those dots in my course, for example. And then you learn, uh, how do I help these people heal? Uh, what is uh, What should I be looking for? And how can I educate them on this topic? Uh, once that connection is made for nurses, they realize that they're able to even own their own practices as a, a, a functional nurse consultant, for example, and they can partner with people that are looking to reverse some of their health concerns and heal and get better. And that is a really exciting revelation for a lot of my students to realize how much there is in uh, significance in the role that they already are able to play for their patients. A lot of my students thought they'd become a nurse practitioner until they take the course and they realize that actually they already are everything that their patients need. 
just with the knowledge that they have as a registered nurse, they're able to make huge differences. And even for me personally, as a nurse practitioner, I oh maybe only 5% of what I do is in my nurse practitioner scope. Most of what I do for my clients is RN scope of practice. And I always tell people, you know, the other 5% is when my patients want to see what's under the hood, you know, they want to get lab work done. Um, but some of my nursing uh, students do that, get that uh, accomplished in different ways or they choose to not work with labs and their patients get a ton of benefit from working for, with them and they heal and get better and have happy, healthy lives. Another example I like to use is the term internal medicine, right? Because that implies that same word medicine. But when I worked in corporate healthcare, I worked in a primary care clinic and we had partner clinics. And if I was on call, I would cover for the providers, the physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants from, let's say, six other practices. And so when I was on call, I was also on call for the internal medicine practice. And that internal medicine practice saw a lot of the same patients that I did, uh, often people with heavier prescription loads and more chronic health conditions. But they had a nurse that worked in that office, just like my office up the road, registered nurse that would have visits with patients at the office, just like my office, and um, maybe do Medicare annual wellness visits and um, visits for injections and visits for education. The nurse from one of those clinics could easily cover for the other one. They would work back and forth. Um, and so I think I, I use that as an example to kind of circle back to this term medicine. She was an internal medicine nurse because she worked in an internal medicine clinic seeing patients in her scope as an RN. Um, so I don't think there's anything wrong with saying you're a functional medicine nurse because we have internal medicine nurses. We have all kinds of medicine nurses because of the, the setting that they're practicing in. But I do have uh, hope moving forward that the functional nurse term will have a lot of room as functional medicine grows into... I always say, I hope someday we don't need my course anymore because what we are learning becomes a part of every healthcare practitioner's education when they become a nurse, become a physician, um, that they're getting this training in their fundamental, like their entry level schooling. So my hope in the future is that we don't need to use the, the term functional medicine um, to define what we're doing because it is standard of care for everybody to ask why and figure out why they have a health concern and help them heal. In the meantime, I think we're growing into this term as a group, my, my students and me and my peers, um, that we are functional nurses and that nursing is the hope for the future of healthcare and for people to heal and have happier, healthier lives. I hope that this was insightful for you and that um, it has helped you figure out how to advocate a little bit better for what you want to call yourself and how to talk about this with your peers. And until next time, be well. Thank you for tuning in for this episode of the Functional Nurse Podcast. If you want to help spread the word about the powerful role nurses can play as true healers using functional medicine practices, consider sharing an episode with a nurse friend or on social media. And click the subscribe button to stay informed of newly released episodes. You can also visit and share the links below in the show notes for more information on nursing resources and the Functional Medicine for Nurses course offered through the Integrative Nurse Coach Academy in partnership with the Institute for Functional Medicine.